Hi, it's Christine here. I'm a demonstrator with Stampin' Up! and um, this is Cards and Wine. Welcome. Um, apparently it's Tuesday. I'm not really sure how that happened, but here we are. So I'm going to flip my camera around and we will get down to the desk and I've got some fun stuff for this week. Right. I apologize for the motion there. We'll turn the light on and here we are. So this week, um, I wanted to, I'd mentioned, um, I think last week that I was going to showcase retiring bundles for the next few weeks. Um, so what that means is this is currently sold as a bundle, Timeless Tulips stamp set. It's gorgeous. Um, it's got these tulip images and it's got really nice sentiments, a big variety. It's got Mother's Day, Get Well Soon, Hello, Happy Birthday. Um, it's got a nice sympathy one and even an Easter and spring themed one, um, which I will show you what I did with um, in a little bit. And it also comes with a tulip builder punch, which is super cute. So as a bundle, it's 10% off the regular price of buying these pieces individually. Um, and coming in the next catalog, so starting on March 4th, no, May 4th, <laughs> apologies, on May 4th, you'll still be able to buy these two pieces, but only individually, not at that 10% bundled price. So if you like this one, don't wait. It is really cute. And I'm going to show you a few things to do with it. Um, I'm also going to be using my water painters. So water painters are sold in a pack of three, and there's three different sizes of our brushes. So I'm going to be using these to make backgrounds today. So um, they screw backwards, which is a bit weird. But anyway, you fill the chamber with water. I'm not going to take it apart, but you just unscrew it, put water in this part, and just squeeze a bit so that the water can come down that brush. So this one's like completely dry. So it's just going to take a couple seconds. There we go. Always a good idea to have a good old paper towel at your side when you're using these because you will want to clean them off. And I just use them with regular ink, which I will show you as soon as I get this nice and nice and wet. Um, let's see. So I hope you all had an awesome long weekend. The weather was, for the most part, absolutely phenomenal. Um, I was a bit under the weather, so if you read my um, my newsletter that was a little late coming out you'll see what what went down there but anyway um, yeah so I chilled out this weekend like completely I read two books <laughs> it's almost embarrassing I'm reading the Bridgerton books if you haven't seen the Netflix show it's worth worth it um, but it's a whole series of books and they are quick fluffy fun anyway so I've been speeding through them and I have that ability to read um, all by myself. Well, even with lots of noise around, it, it really doesn't bother me. So I blocked it all out and just read my book. <laughs> so um, this is similar to the card we're going to make. Um, I've used Melon Mambo ink for our pretty tulips and um, Granny Apple Green for the leaves. But we're going to make this background piece first. And I did this using the water painters. I'm sorry, I keep throwing this around. So. I'm going to set this card around and show you the background. So we are going to use, oh yes, so I'm going to show you how to do it, but then because it needs a little bit of time to dry, I have another one all ready to go. <clears throat> so we're going to need our Melon Mambo, Granny Apple Green, and I use Daffodil Delight. So we're going to start with the green, and there's one thing I forgot to grab, and that is, sorry, I also recommend that you have baby wipes on hand when doing this or a damp um, paper towel because it does get a little bit messy. So I've already taken the green out. Our brush tip is nice and wet. I just stuck my finger in the ink. That's awesome. Um, something if you have these ink pads, I don't know if you ever noticed these. These are stickers at the back. So I've stuck one on the front so that I know what ink color I have without having to look at the top. And what I've noticed a few other demonstrators do is taking a sticker and putting it here so that if you have more than one ink pad open, you know what it is. So I haven't done all of mine yet. I'm kind of starting slowly, but 
little tip for you. So this is um, shimmer white paper, which is thicker than normal paper, and it has a gorgeous shimmer through it. I'm sorry, I'm skipping a step. Before we get to that, we're just going to pick up a bit of ink on a block. It doesn't matter what block you use. So that is actually what we're going to use and not the ink pad. Then I'm just going to, I've just squeezed the brush a little bit to put more water in that, just to dilute it a little bit. And I'm going to attempt to do this the same way as my my other one. <laughs> and I'm just going across the paper. It does not need to be perfect, although I am trying to get saturation the whole way across. And you can always go over a bit to finish off those lines. And it just does kind of a cool watercolored effect. I'm running out of ink. There we go. So, and then to clean your brush, you just squeeze some water and go along your paper towel until the color is off your brush. This is water-based ink, right? So it comes clean. I want to get this nice and clean though because I'm going into the yellow next. And I don't really want to mix my colors. And there we go, we have a clean brush. So I'll just set that aside while I get my block clean. So I'm just using a baby wipe to wash off any green remaining on that block. And then we're gonna move on to the yellow and do the exact same thing. Now with my yellow, I'm gonna go in the other direction because I wanna make a plaid like design. So I've just added a little bit of water to that to make it a little more, a little more liquidy. Now I did an experiment with the shimmer white paper as well as just our regular white paper to see which one kind of held its color more. Um, and I do find the shimmer white does look a little bit brighter and I'm going to go back to the card that I made to show you what I mean. Just want to make sure this is clean because I'm going to use it to make a background. Ooh, I hope I have enough water in there. All right. So our last color. So this is a little bit messy as you can see, <laughs> but well worth the effort. So the last color I want to bring in is my um, Melon Mambo. Just going to kind of be my bright color in here. So again, I'm going to do the same thing and pick up my Melon Mambo with my ink block. Whoop, sorry about that. And I'll set that aside. And I'm going to switch to a thinner brush. So I mentioned that it came, these water painters come in a set of three. So there's kind of that really thick brush that we were using. And then there's um, a super fine brush, which is this one and one that's in between. So I'm just going to add a bit of water to that to make it really fluid. And I'm just going to kind of try to go delicately. So I'm just making a plaid pattern with this. And for go through the white. So my stripes are not super even. Um, you'll see the first one I did in a moment that'll be a little prettier. So I'm just um, I don't think you can see this. I'm doing the same technique to get the Melon Mambo ink off my brush. Um, with some colors, such as the reds and the really bright pinks, your brush could end up being a little bit stained, but as long as there's no more pink coming off it, it is clean. So not a concern there. All right, and then we'll clean off our ink block up a lot of pink there. <laughs> uh, 
I don't think that's quite clean. There we go. So that is it for this one. So it's, I really don't think you can see it in the camera, but there's such a sh pretty shimmer to this paper. So this is it dry and slightly neater that I did earlier. So I'm going to set that aside to dry and I'm just going to pull out. So this is the original card I made and you can see the yellows, especially I find are the big difference. Um, you can see that the yellow is a lot paler. This is the regular white weight paper that we have and this is the shimmer white. So the yellow is a lot brighter in this one. Um, the green I would say is actually paler in the shimmer which is interesting and the, um, the pink is about the same intensity. So just a little comparison for you. So I'm going to set our background aside and we're going to do our tulips. So I'm going to use Melon Bombo to do the tulips. So I'm just going to grab, see I cannot be trusted, <laughs> the pink finger. Ah, there we go. It's all good. It washes off. So I have had this bundle for I think two years. It's one of the first ones I bought and I just, I love it and I'm so happy that it's going to be available next year too. so pretty so I'm just before I stamp that my tulip is on this side of my punch so I'm actually going to do my tulips starting on this side of the paper just so that I don't uh, use more paper than is necessary so I want three tulips and we're going to be punching these out go so these are the clear stamps the photopolymer stamps and you can see that mine some of mine are very stained and that's totally okay as long as you can wipe them clean and have no more ink coming off they are they're clean so it's really not a concern and it's gonna happen with any really bright pink or red like I mentioned the other colors seem to not do it we're going to punch out our three tulips. So our punches, if you haven't used one before, they come in this locked position. So they're flat, easier to store. Slide the unlocking mechanism, locking mechanism, I suppose, open. And you just slide in your paper. So my trick to make sure I have it lined up where I want is I just punch, I just press down kind of lightly so that it grabs the paper. And I can just test the position that way. And then when I'm happy with it, I just punch all the way through. And one more. There's a lot of detail in these stamps, which I just love. Especially with those bright colors. All right, so that's our tulips done. And we're gonna need some leaves. Just gonna get rid of these extra little pieces. So there's a couple different leaf designs that you can use in this stamp set, but there's only one that works with the punch. So I'm gonna use that one, and I will use Granny Apple Green to make my leaves. Sticking to the same colors I've used in my background. And just flipping over for the orientation, my leaves are going to go this way. I was playing around with this set on the weekend too, and I'm going to show you something you can do with the leaves, which is so cute. So I think I only need, yeah, I'll just do four leaves. And we'll put that away. And I'm going to come back to my sentiment a little later. I just want to kind of build this up. Build up my card for, oh, well first we're going to punch out those leaves, sorry. So 
So because I'm using my camera to do the um, Facebook Live, I can't actually see any comments, but if you have any, please leave them. I will come back and answer any questions and say my hellos after the video. It takes a couple of minutes to load up to my page and then I can go back and see them all. So by stamping my leaves on one side and the flowers I had started with the other side, I'm um, not using as much paper, like I'm not wasting as much. Just these little trimming pieces, but I still have a little piece left for our sentiment. So I'm going to keep our leaves. Let me just get rid of the rest. There we go. This set just reminds me of spring so much. Love it. So I'm going to use Melon Mambo as my card base. So I have cut um, an 11 and 11 by eight and a half sheet in half, and I have scored it at four and a quarter. And to continue with my matchy matchy, I'm using a layer of. Um, color did I say this was? Daffodil Delight is going to be my layer so I'm just going to glue that down with liquid glue. Because the Mambo, Melon Mambo is such a bright color I will, I won't do it on the video but I would add um, a smaller sheet of just regular white, right, white on the inside to be able to write more clearly. Although if you used a nice black pen, like a, with a decent tip on it, you could write on the pink too and it would look good. Then we're going to add our background piece. I'm also going to just glue that on. I am trying, I'm going to use a different ribbon on this one, which will not require bow. If you've seen my videos before, you know that I'm not a big fan of bows. <laughs> they drive me nuts. Especially on video when you're trying to like, you know, be efficient and make something pretty. So one of the things that I normally do when I use my water painters like this is I like to let my piece dry. But I'll put something kind of heavy over top just to kind of flatten it out again because the paper will curl a bit with the water. And that's okay. But that's also why I'm kind of going over it right now just to make sure it's nice and flat. There we go. So we've got our background. And I'm just going to arrange our tulips and leaves just to have an idea of what I'm doing here. And Sorry, not much talking while I'm arranging. All right, so that's pretty cute. Um, so that kind of gives me an idea of where I want to put things. I do want to lift up my leaves, <clears throat> sorry, my flowers, but I'm gonna glue the leaves down. So I'm actually going to start, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start with my tulips. Now that I've kind of visualized where I want them and I'm gonna use dimensionals to put them down them down so they're going to be lifted up. Now you're going to notice I'm not going to put, I'm just going to put two dimensionals in the center and the reason I'm leaving all this space without any sticky stuff on it is I want to be able to wedge those leaves in there in such a way as they'll look good. So I don't want this centered, I want it kind of off center. Last but not least, I'm 
here we go. So a little trick I learned with the leaves. So I'm just using my bone folder and I've curled my leaf up. Isn't that cute? So I'm just gonna use a bit of liquid glue to wet that down. And I'm gonna put it, I'm not using a lot of glue because I wanna be able to move it um, to where I want it. So I'm getting in behind my tulip. I don't want it off the card because I won't be able to put the card in the envelope. So I'm kind of just, there we go. So that's one down. So I'm gonna curl the tip of that one as well and put that in on that side. Isn't that the cutest with them curling up? I don't know why, I'd never actually tried that before. I think I mentioned I've had this for two years and it just had never really occurred to me to curl them. <laughs> and I'll do this one next. Another neat trick with this too, if you wanted to, is you could punch out like in just regular cardstock and then layer this piece on top and it adds a little more dimension to your flower, which is super cool. I do find it works best if you're using like just cardstock as opposed to stamping the image, but if you wanted to build a tulip, it looks really cute. And our last one, because it's this orientation, it won't look so nice. I'm gonna stick it in this way. So I'm gonna curl the other end, the wider end. Oh. Sorry, I always have two glue tubes on the go because I like to keep one upside down for the fine tip and the other one right side up for the wide tip. <laughs> Just makes it so I don't have to wait for my glue. All right, so that's pretty cute, right? So we need a sentiment and I wanna use this super cute polka dot tool um, ribbon. And I actually, I think I am gonna make a bow, but it's just a bow with tool, so it's not quite as frustrating. <laughs> All right. So um, I think this ribbon is in the, well, it's in the last chance sale now. I'm not sure if it's discounted or not. A lot of the ribbons that are retiring and the embellishments are, so something to look into if you like this one. It's just so gosh darn cute. And I'm actually gonna tuck that in there. So I'm just gonna cut that. If you like having your um, ribbons cut on an angle too, if you go between the dots, it gives you a perfect little little angle on your ribbon. All right, so I'm gonna stick that in there. And we just need a glue dot, excuse the reach. So I'm just pushing the ribbon to the glue dot and it all comes off together. And then we need a sentiment. So for this one, there's quite a lot going on here. So I think I want something kind of smallish that's gonna go across. Um, so I'm gonna do the happy birthday. Um, I mentioned I've had this stamp set for quite a while. So the stamps aren't quite as sticky on, on the uh, back side as they could be. So a little tip on that is just run them under water, just, just regular water and um, if they're really gunked up, you can use just really mild soap on them and they will be just as sticky as the day you got them. So nothing complicated with the sentiment. I'm just uh, putting it on Whisper White and I'm just gonna cut that. Sorry, it's not Whisper White anymore, it is Basic White. And I'm just gonna use my snips and cut that out. I 
I don't have a ton of room on the end, but I'm just going to snip a slight angle here. And I can match it here. There we go. And I kind of want to put that over here, so I'm just going to use dimensionals to pop that up. And because the tool is such an open weave, um, this will stick right through. So that is our little birthday card with the fun little plaid background. So I'll show you what I had done with this one. You can see I've got happy spring, then happy, happy everything. So the stamp actually says happy Easter, I think. It does. It says happy Easter, happy spring, happy, happy everything. But um, because Easter is past, I didn't want the Easter in there. So I just cut it, like I stamped it down and then I just cut the words out. So you can build your sentiments any way you like. So that is the first card. Now for the second card, we're going to go back to our aqua painter, uh, water painters. I don't know why I keep calling them aqua painters, but I do. And I'm missing an ink color. Sorry, I'm just going to pull out my pool party ink. And my desk gets smaller. <laughs> okay, so we're going to make a card similar to this, um, except that we're going to use different colors. So first we're going to do our background. I'm going to use the big water painter again. And he's still got, I think, enough water to carry us through. So I'm going to pick up some of the pool party ink. That's what I want to use for my background. Oof. There we go. That's plenty. And I'm just going to wet it down a bit. Ooh, that's really wet. Okay. Hopefully it's not too bad. And I'm just going to basically paint, that's really wet, so I didn't mean to grab quite that much blue um, water, but anyway, here we are. So, and just by playing with the brush strokes a bit differently, you can kind of alter the look of that. So I'm just going to have to wash that underwater because I think I'm officially out of ink in my painter, and that's fine. So that's all there is to that. So once that dries, um, I did actually try it in my earlier. I tried it on the shimmer. So this is the regular white, white and this is the shimmer white. So the color's fairly, fairly true on both. Um, this is so cool. I wish, I wish you could see this. The shimmer is so pretty in here. Anyway, so we don't need that. We're gonna put this over to dry. So normally what I would do, I've got a really big um, stamp block, which I'm not going to pull out, but I would put um, a piece of tissue under, piece of tissue on top and stamp block and just leave it for an hour or so and it dries to look like this. So I want to add some splotches, little ink flicks. And I studied hard this weekend and this is what I learned. So I'm using, um, this is water-based, this is the Mem Memento ink refill. You can do this with any color refill as well. So I don't need much. I just put one drop. And then we're gonna pull out the fine tip, um, the fine tip water painter. And I just wanna add a teeny bit of water. And I'm just swooshing that around just to make it a little bit more liquid. Now, the trick to not making a mess with this is to just put your block over the area you want and I'm just flicking. That was a lot of flick and that's it. So that's about all I want on there. Now I did notice 
that my water painter really um, picks up the black and the brush is a little bit stained like it's coming out gray instead of white now not a huge deal in my mind um, just something to keep in mind with the darker colors that may stain your water painter but again as long as it's running clear you know that it's clean and you're good to go so that is the art of flicking it's not fun the key is to you know hold your your block close to your um, paper so that you're not flicking across a great distance otherwise your whole desk will be covered um, so yeah that's what I learned it's really not very difficult to do so I'm going to um, let this dry as well I won't use this one right away we're gonna use this one which I did on the weekend so I'm just gonna set that over there to dry so this is our background piece we need a tulip and just to switch it up I'm going to use the Calypso Coral for this tulip to show you how beautiful these are in many different colors. Um, tulip stand. leaves to go with our tulip so where I find I use the other leaves um, that don't fit in the punch more is if I'm just stamping directly on paper where's my green I didn't oh it's under the punch <laughs> um, yeah I'll use the stems because there's two different styles of stems here too there's a straight straighter one and a curved one so um, I'll typically use those if I'm just stamping directly on paper and don't intend on, um, on punching them out. Excuse the screeching nine-year-old if you can hear that. He does that sometimes. <laughs> All right. So now we're gonna punch these out. And I'm keeping this card fairly simple. And you'll see that that splotch, the ink flicks, um, they just add a, a fair amount of dimension already. It's also a really cool technique if you're trying to do like a vintage looking card. swept up my leaves all right so again for this one I'm gonna put my tulip down with the dimensionals and then I'm gonna put my um, my leaves directly on the with glue onto the paper so I'm just putting dimensionals in the center to pop that up but I'm leaving a lot of room to put the sticky pieces underneath sorry the leaves underneath Have a rogue hair on my sweater and it keeps tickling my arm excuse me I'll get rid of that <laughs> okay so I'm going to curl my leaf again because I'm just completely in love with doing that and grab some glue and this one can hang over because um, I haven't assembled my card yet, but it will, there will be card about this wide underneath. So it's okay if the leaf isn't perfectly uh, aligned there. And actually the only reason I went that far in is because I got glue on the paper and I didn't want it to show. So I altered my course at the last minute, it happens. So that's a pretty color combination too, the granny apple green with the calypso and the pool party in the background. So let's put our card together. 
So I'm using a thick white card base. Again, 11 by eight and a half that I cut in half and then I scored at the four and a quarter mark. And those little black splotches are dry, thankfully. I'm like, oh no, I'm gonna wreck my paper. Um, this is some um, playing with patterns um, designer series paper. So all of the designer series paper with the exception of one are retiring as well, won't be available after May 3rd, if supplies last that long even. Um, the one that's carrying over is the In Good Taste Designer Series paper, which is really cool. It's full of really nice textures and wood grains and tiles, so it's a really cool one. So the whole reason I did my tulip in Calypso Coral is because I wanted to use this really pretty Calypso Coral paper. And I likes to be matchy matchy. So I could put this up on dimensionals, but I'm not going to, I'm just gonna put it flat because I've already got my tulip raised up. And I am gonna use some more of that tool ribbon because it's so fun. I'm going to try to leave as even um, border at the top and bottom and maybe the sides too. <laughs> this is why I use liquid glue so that I can wriggle things around. There we go. So I'm just pressing this down a little longer than I normally would just because the paper is a little bit curled and I want to lay flat. So there's that, and now let's pull in a bit of our ribbon. I'm just going to do a knot this time. I'm not going to do a bow. right there under my tulip so again I'm going to use a glue dot to do that I'm trying to wedge it a bit under the tulip And then we need a sentiment for this one. So I'm just gonna use a simple hello, which is this one. And because I've got it right here, I'll do that in Calypso as well. So I'm just using a scrap of the white. trim that with my scissors. <clears throat> I want it to be fairly thin so it doesn't take away from the tulip. And I'm going to do that slant thing again because I like it. You, know, you start doing things and you're like, oh, I like that. <laughs> I'm in a slant phase. And I'm actually just going to use a bit of liquid glue and put that down. You can see how easy it is to use this stamp set and I gave you some ideas for backgrounds. I hope you like those. I will be using my water painters again because um, you can use them to actually paint images too which is super fun. It's all about just controlling the amount of water you have so you don't uh, over wet the paper. So these are the cards we made tonight. 
So I hope you like those and um, please let me know if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer them. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Have an amazing week. Four day week. Hooray. <laughs> let me find the stop button. There we go.